following Alice's adventures, in the hunting of the snark, there are ten characters who have no names other than their professions, jobs which all mysteriously start with the letter B. The Bellman, Boots, Bonnet Maker, Barrister, Broker, Billiard Maker, Banker, Beaver, Butcher, and Baker, as listed in the beginning. In his game of logic, Carol used similarly B-word things, buns, babies, beetles, and battle doors, which is a badminton racket, as his examples of individual things, also known as B-ings. Carol likewise used baked, beautiful, black, and broken as his examples of attributes. In Carol's introduction, he sarcastically says Alice's adventures show us that as their author he is incapable of nonsense, and that in this new brief but instructive poem, that this includes precise arithmetic truth and natural history, which are words that apply to Aristotle's categories, but also the work of Aristotle on logic and Aristotle's work as a whole. So if Aristotle's ten types of being fit the ten who work jobs that start with B, and are thus being each of their own way on the hunt, it is certainly possible that the hunting of the snark works like a logic puzzle, like the very sort that Carroll designed using tables in his work on logic, and we can solve the puzzle by assigning each character an Aristotelian category. There is evidence from cover to cover, including the images on the front and back covers, that the bellman, the first character of the story, the captain of the ship and the leader of the adventurous hunt, is Time, Father Time, and carries a school bell, and he definitely has an alarm clock to one of the characters waking him, the barrister from his dream of a pig. If the bellman is Time, with a finger in every one's hair, the boots is likely place, which would make sense your boots are where you're placed, who knows the rudder is backwards, then he sharpens a spade for digging in a spot. The maker of bonnets and hoods for birth and death would be positioned. Alice worries about birth and death and positions of old age and being young, specifically in the rabbit's house, which would be position, who is positioned on the hull of the ship and creates an arrangement of bows to award success. The barrister, who dreams of a pig on trial, is involved in relations. The barrister tries to prepare the beaver by citing cases. The pig appears in the house of the duchess, who is poor at relations. We are told the broker values the goods, and that is some of all we hear, and that he sharpens the spade with the boots. That would be quality of value, so sharpening the spade is better quality for digging in place. We barely learn about the billiard maker at all, but the billiard maker is involved in games, who chalks his own nose as if he is a tool for playing the game. He is a tool for action. The banker writes a check for England state, and the bank carries a telescope, and that's mentioned by the ticket taker, corresponds in Alice in the looking glass to the train. The beaver, who paces nervously on the deck and knits lace, the white rabbit is all confused and is man and beast. Alice is a tangling with the kitten she loves and hates alternatively, it seems. There's the yarn ball of the black kitten. So, the beaver who paces on the deck and knits lace is passion, the character most like the white rabbit. And the butcher, who carves things up, dresses too formally, and teaches the beaver sums, is quantity, making the beaver much the passionate child, learning sums from the elder mathematician of quantity. Foremost and finally, the baker who leaves everything on the beach, he bakes bride's cake, which is sweet substance. The king of hearts in Wonderland wears a crown on his wig on himself all uncomfortably. He doesn't lie, which is very much not true of the mock turtle. He is roused by muffins, mustard, and jam. He forgets his specific name. Well, if he's all of substance, he in a certain sense wouldn't have a specific name as all of it. It wouldn't be of a specific type. And he fades away as mortal material substance does without a trace in the end, which many, of course, say is a bit existential end of death, is about facing the uncertainty of mortality and of being a substantive mortal creature. He definitely believes there is something of a golden beyond, and in his schoolboy work about Aristotle, he says Aristotle missed it. The baker vanishes. They don't find a button, feather, or mark, any substance as evidence, as substance himself has vanished away. The snark hunt as a whole suggests material being is confusing in space and time for us partial mortals, and yet there is the solid beyond substance that cannot be named nor categorized, what Carroll believed is golden, but past Aristotle and the intertangled categories.